Who's that? Who are you? Dr. Peter Gerard. My son Paul sent me to you. He said you'd help me. Would you mind telling me where your bloody friends are? I wish I could. I haven't the faintest idea. Hang on, what's that? You hang on here. He'll be furious. Who? Nicola. And Bert? I'm sorry. I'm going to cause traffic between you. Oh. There'll be a bit of shouting, but uh, I'll survive. What about the job? The smuggling run? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's still on. Day after tomorrow. So uh, we'll be back in plenty of time. Doesn't it ever bother me? Often. You've done it before. I swore I'd never get involved again. Found myself in a corner. Just like my father, when he stole artifacts from the archaeological site. Oh, you didn't know about that. It's highly illegal. Who told you? Cariades. He's no ordinary cop. He's attached to the Department of Antiquities. It is true. I'm sure Dr. Gerard had his reasons. Oh, sure. He needed money. That's why I said we're not so different after all. Nobody's perfect, son. He only did it so he could go on with his work. Of course. And I'm doing it because I don't want to end up in a German jail. You see, we're both trying to survive in our own way. But you can't see that, can you? I'm trying to. What sort of things will he be smuggling? Highly profitable. Otherwise, Paul wouldn't be here in Greece jeopardizing the whole bloody thing. Is Cotillard suspicious? <laughs> Very. So, you have taken a risk doing this for us, haven't you? Uh, why don't you get out and make some coffee? I'm trying to say thanks, Paul. Mine's black, I should. Right. Your friend is very beautiful. You're not talking about Bert, are you? <laughs> she really is going to be very angry. Oh, I hope the angels won't keep you away. <laughs> I don't think anything good. Oh, it seems you misjudged your young man, Sonia. I upset it, but he is not my young man. No, of course not. Good night, Dr. Kim. The farmhouse is about a mile from here. Just a brisk walk. You must be very tired. Did I sleep for long? Just a few hours. Curled up like a kitten. You are not supposed to work. You are supposed to rest. At least finish your breakfast. I wouldn't dare not to, Helena. Oh, there are some people coming up the path. Tell Andreas to get rid of me. 
Never mind, Andreas, I'll get rid of. You go away. This is a private farm. Sonia! Oh, Sonia! Sonia! So, we don't get rid of. We bring coffee? Yes. Peter Alfred. Adrian. That path, oh, a bit longer and steeper than I expected. What are you doing here? Hmm? I telephoned you last night in London. What are you doing on left us? How did you find me? Wait, just one thing at a time. Hello, Father. Oh. So you brought them here. Yes. My friend, I have to talk to you. Ah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I telephoned three times last night. The telephone is here, I tell you. Come in, sir. Ah, my dear friend, you know it. Cordiali would like to speak to you, if you don't mind. <laughs> you lead the way. about? Nothing. Meet me in half an hour in the square. I have some arrangements to make.
beautiful place in the world? Perfect. Up here, nothing seems to matter. Yeah, you know what? Nothing does matter. Not smuggling trips or policemen. Or even fathers. Are they still talking? Oh, yes, always so much to talk about with everyone with me. It's important. Mm. Something to do with horror. Make allowances. Oh, I have. I have. Now, when I was a kid, this indifference used to hurt me. But I'm all grown up now. Put away such childish things. Have you? What's that consolation? As you can see. Not stolen that plastic. Hard. Paul Gerard borrowed it. Ah. He took some people, Miss Winters and a scientist friend, to see his father in Lefkus. So that's why you and your husband spend the night as well. Is there any reason why we shouldn't? None whatever. Then I really can't understand why you ask. A simple remark. Making conversation. Isn't that the expression? Or why you're keeping tabs on us. Tabs? Another expression? Checking up. Tabs, eh? I must make a note of it. Your language is almost as colourful as Greek. Oh, I could give you even more colourful expressions, Capitan. That will be amusing. Unfortunately, I have to go and find my husband. He's having coffee in the square with your German friend, Mr. Ball. Is the boat fully fueled? He'll be ready, don't worry. I don't think it's very smart meeting like this. Old friends drinking coffee, but could be more natural. Ah, the young lady. That policeman, Coriardis, he really scares me. Just remember, he can prove nothing. You're so bloody sure, aren't you? Not so sure. But if we allow ourselves to be panicked, we'll certainly arouse the suspicion. That's why I wanted the boat fueled and you at sea. When? Now. You said tomorrow that was the plan. I've uh, reconsidered. The sooner we get you out of the country and away from Cordiadis, the better. Now, there's another change. I'm coming with you. Ah, uh, Nicola. Tell Paul, will you? Where is he, on board? Probably. Well, tell him. Um, <clears throat> that's going to be a bit difficult. You see, uh, Paul's on Lufkus. And we haven't got a bloody clue when he's coming back. It's nearly midday. Huh. They'll be going berserk back on the mainland. <laughs> Your friend, Nicola. Don't start that again. Paul, I'm not coming with you. Why not? He's with friends. Yes. You've got your own life to live. But your father isn't well. He's talking of starting work again down in the cave. 
Oh, that's crazy. It's his last chance. He has no more money, and after what's happened on his last trip, no one is going to finance him again. But what's he going to prove? I mean, some obscure theory about men migrating from Africa. If he finds his painted cave, will that alter the history of the world? No. But it's being his whole life, and it means everything to him. Can't you understand? I'm sorry, I can't stay. I have to get back to Proveso. Of course. Your friends will be waiting. Is that clear? Timing's important. Don't let me down. Around four, Doctor. I believe there's a bus that will get me to Athens tomorrow. What's in Athens? Professor Holroyd. I'm sorry, Paul, but I am sworn to secrecy. That's okay. I can assure you of one thing. Your father's a clever man. Holroyd's underestimated him. replies to the invitations you sent out. Good. Every one of them will be here tomorrow. Except Gilmore. Pity. I'd have enjoyed having Gilmore share in our moment of triumph. Doing here. Right. 
Where's Sonia? On left coast. Look what's happening. I have to get back to the mainland. The fishing boat will take you, Doctor. Oh. Thank you. Take it easy. There you go. Thank you. Look, could somebody get my things? Nick? Yes? Well, you really screwed things up, didn't you? I am. William Boyd, we're going to let this piece of fishing. Have you given that? Adrian Gilmore. Uh, pleased to meet you. Uh, oh, thank you. Right. Thank what you very much. What the hell is going on, really? Slight change of plan, my dear boy. doesn't seem disposed to tell me. Do you blame him? She must have been very persuasive. Oh, come on, Nicky. Look, I've tried to I explain. don't care. You shouldn't have taken the boat. Shh. I'll do the talking. You make some coffee. And technically, it's my boat. Then you make the bloody coffee. She's a lovely girl. Rather volatile. I bet you've been up to no good in that direction, my dear boy. You seem very damn pleased with yourself, Willie. Well, in all modesty, I must admit, I've used this situation to some advantage. I think this calls for a drink. Well, we're heading south. What's our destination? Kilini. Below the Gulf of Patches. That's the place. Why there? All in good time. Of course, there's a lot of trouble, Paul. What time do you estimate we'll reach Kilini? Early tomorrow? That's what I'd hope for. Que puntos piques de autobús? De la escala. Segura. Segura. Do you confirm this, doctor? Yes. That we are going to left us. So that's it. And this man was with them? Yes. Look, I don't catch that bus. I've got to be in Athens tomorrow for Professor Holroyd's meeting. All right, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. It's on altar, to the course you set. Uh, why don't you go and get some sleep? I don't like Borg being with us. Neither do I. There is one consolation. Oh, what's that? Well, there can't be much danger. Billy Borg is not one of nature's heroes. Mm. I never thought of that.
Parker and the cabin door. Hostess, tie up. Wait for me. Here are your instructions. We still make the creek? No. The rendezvous is tonight at sea off Navarone Bay. You caused the change of plans with your behavior. What are we meeting? A motor cruiser. Well, how the hell are we going to find that out at sea at night? They'll find you. I've got radar. How many packages? Four. What's in them? Mind your own bloody business. But it is our business. Look, if they're drugs, really, they get emptied overboard. They're not drugs. And I don't take kindly to threats from the likes of you. Look, our next are on the block. We have a right to know. The gold ornaments. It's an extremely valuable cargo. Icons looted from churches and graveyards. Don't try my patience too far, Paul. Oh, what would you do, Billy? Change your mind and come with us, share the risk. After the pickup, you won't return to Greece. You head straight for Malta. Wait a minute, what about that transit lock? Shut up, Paul! He's right. We've got to clear the lock before we get out of Greek waters. Why do you think I planted that Levka story? It's a large island. It'll take Kodiades two days to check out. By that time, you're safe. And when we get to Malta? A boat will radio contact you outside the harbor. The packages will be transferred. Mmm. Sounds all right. I've gone to a great deal of trouble to make it all right. Just keep your nerve and obey the instructions. And in a few days' time, you'll be safely at home and I'll be tearing up the mortgages. I want to have a private word with you. I take it Costas is driving you to Athens? Yes. Yeah. Maybe the police aren't as stupid as you think. You could be picked up at the airport. But the artist isn't stupid at all. That's precisely why I left my passport at the hotel. I left it? And my clothes. <sighs> that should fall in for a couple of days. Tomorrow Costas buys you a new passport. And a change of clothes. And you're on the midday flight back to Hamburg. Very smooth. I thought you might appreciate that. Oh, well, there's no point in being clever unless you can tell someone. Is that all you wanted to say? Not quite. You get your $10,000 on delivery. If anything goes wrong, the fight in Hamburg. You turn me in. Only if you force me to. Oh, the man has died. It's a murder charge now. West of Pilus below Navarone Bay. How far is that? Uh, it's about 120 sea miles. We'll have to give the old girl full bore to make that. Oh, well, once we're around the headland, the current should be with us. Are we holding for gas? We've got enough in the reserve tank to get out of Greek waters. Oh, thank God for that. At least we don't have to go back. Sonia, my dear, not even you. I must find it alone. But you know only the top strata, not all the way down to the sea. But I won't go too deep. 
Not today. Mrs. Papadimas, you'll be pleased. Zavellas is making a search of the coves around the island, but I don't really expect we'll find them on leftists. Why not? Paul did say he'd like to try some skin diving. Miss Winters, he hasn't committed a crime yet. I'm trying to stop it before it happens. I know nothing about any crime. Do you know this man? No, I don't believe so. Wilhelm Borg, antique dealer from Hamburg. <laughs> I can't afford antiques. He's with them. My information from Interpol is that Pauls worked for him before. He was caught once in Spain. <laughs> yes, he told me he didn't like Spanish jail. That's when he decided to reform. Oh, more tickets. Professor Colroy. Two young men whom you do not know and whom the professor has generously insisted must share the credit with him on this important occasion. Mr. Pavlakis, ladies and gentlemen, I'm greatly flattered by your attendance here today. A select group of the major archaeologists and anthropologists of Europe. Because of your eminence, I don't need to tell you that the objects displayed, the objects which you have already examined, are the skull of a Neanderthaloid and a lampstone authenticated as belonging to early Cro-Magnon man, the first original Homo sapiens. The geophysical nature of the site was Mesozoic limestone with a volcanic overlay. I have notes and evidence to show you in due course that these discoveries were made at the same level that primitive man and our own Homo sapiens strain coexisted side by side. Yes, I think you'll agree. It is indeed a revolutionary thought. And now we come to the crux of my submission. This skull of our ape-like Neanderthal ancestor shows a massive fracture, which could only have been caused by a blow from some sharp weapon. A deliberate blow, a killer blow. I submit our long-held theory that the ape-man died out naturally because he could not compete against the new post-glacial species of man cannot now be supported. I think we must now accept that our poor, backward, ape-like ancestor was murdered. The earliest genocide committed by our own first species. And the fire marks on this fragment of skull suggest even more. That our fault, our own Homo sapiens strain, were cannibals. Who killed the ape, not as an enemy, but for food. Monsieur, 
We all feel indebted to Professor Holroyd for this truly remarkable thesis. He has a great many slides to show you. Before we proceed, are there any questions? A most illuminating theory, Professor. Quite sensational. I can see the headlines in our more flamboyant Sunday tabloids. What is your question, Dr. Gilmore? I have two. First, was Dr. Peter Gerard not the original discoverer of these objects? Are you accusing me of plagiarism? Oh, I'm merely asking a question. Dr. Gerard did some preliminary work on the site, but uh, he became ill. He was no longer associated with the expedition when I made these discoveries. Then it was entirely your discovery? Yes. Mine and my assistant. Then, Professor, I accuse you of an archaeological hoax, a forgery. Please, gentlemen, please. I reject that. We've done a fluorine examination, carbon-14 test. They have given broadly the same dates for the skull and the stone lamp. Oh, I accept that the skull and the stone lamp are genuine. Then you'll withdraw or apologize. In the interests of science, I shall do neither. the earth fragments taken from both these objects after you had excavated them? Certainly, I have. There they are. Thank you. Then with your indulgence, Mr. Chairman, I propose one further test. A simple test, ladies and gentlemen, to prove an elaborate fraud. We accept that the skull and the lampstone are genuine, but if they were genuinely found at the same site, the Geiger counter will prove it from the Earth's practice. Ladies and gentlemen, is your hoax, your scientific fraud. These objects could not have come from the same soil. This is a trick. I won't accept it. I acted in good faith. It was Gerard. Gerard? But you've already assured us he had nothing to do with this. almost ate all his food. But you, Sonia, you don't eat anything. Have some strawberries, some cherries. Thank you. It was a lovely meal, but I'm rather tired, if you don't mind. Thank you, boys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sonia! Andreas, listen! Uh, Sonia, go to bed. Tired. Tired? You mean you don't know nothing? She's in love. Sonia. Yes, Sonia. Who will? Have a cherry. It's good for the digestion. Who will? That's it. We're nearing the potty 
channel. He needs you. Bert thinks there's something bothering you. Something you haven't told us? No, Nikki, there's nothing bothering me. Well, I thought it might be because you were worrying about your father, or Sonia. Did you? Well, is that it? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I'm worried about my crazy old father and what he's up to. Everyone says he's such a clever man. How did he come to saw someone like me? Got a touch of the EBGBs. Got the butterflies myself. Come on, hey. Where are we? Three miles west of the show. Is there anything about? No. I uh, lost a fishing fleet a while back. Radio is quiet. I'm listening in. Okay. Show's over. Um, if you've got stairs, I'll be up with coffee in a minute. All right? Bring your jacket. It's getting chilly. You all right? Yeah. You sure? We've got enough fuel, just enough to get us back to Malta. God bless Malta. We can't. About what? Head for Malta. What did you say? Not Malta, we have to go back to Greece. Like hell. There's something out there. There's no way in the bloody world we're going back there. We'll talk about it later.
going to Malta. What are you doing? I told you, there's no way we're going back. So don't, for God's sake, make me use this. Het slot van de Lefkasman ziet u volgende week maandag in een extra lange aflevering om vijf voor half tien bij de Tros op Nederland 2.